Good afternoon, Mr. President. Hi. I'm Karen, and thank you so much for doing this. Sure. So I'll be asking you two questions, but you have to forgive me that the first question will be, uh, we'll have a lot of context in it for agriculture. Sure. Our losses are driving farmers to desperation. Yeah. Some farmers already taking their own lives. Mm -hmm. In Davos, you said you would only step down as Agri-Secretary if you've ticked off items in your bucket list. Mm -hmm. My question is, what is in that list? And what will you specifically do to implement for farmers to feel a change in their lives today, in the short and medium term? As a matter of fact, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because it's, uh, we always have been talking about production, production, non-importation, etc. And I, we have to always remind ourselves that you know what we are really talking about is the livelihood of the farmers as well. Not only the, uh, the supply of food, but of the, uh, uh, the pricing of food, but also the livelihood of farmers and the future of farmers. I mean, I think it's a much quoted, uh, a much quoted statistic that in the Philippines, the average farmer is 57, 58 years old, and the uh, young people are not that interested to enter into farming. So there are all of these multifaceted problems that are being that we face in terms in terms of agriculture. So again, in the short term, uh, the um, increasing prices of food products is alarming. And that's why we have to be now have to whatever we do, we cannot, uh, we must import. Uh, I think uh, my, my, my sentiments about importation are clear, but it is an emergency situation that has been brought about by, by neglect of the agricultural sector for many, many years. And therefore, our production is well below our demand. Therefore, we must import. So, um, because of the chaos that we saw uh, with the, with the in question when it came to sugar, when it came to uh, the onions, uh, we did not know how much of, how much of the commodity was actually in the, in the country. We're starting to get a handle on it now. And so we are going to put, uh, the, the, in, in terms of sugar, I mentioned specifically before, that we will now, from now on, maintain a two-month buffer stock. That is to... Uh, um, mitigate the, uh, the speculation. Alam mo, normal yan eh, sa negosyante. Pag alam nila magkaka-shortage, eh, they will keep it hanggang itong asimpresyo. Uh, maybe you can call that hoarding, but it's a business practice. That, and that's what we hope to avoid. In terms of onions naman, ganun pa rin ang sitwasyon. We are um, uh, not producing as much as we uh, consume. And therefore, we still have to import. But the schedule of importation, both of sugar and onion, all of the other commodities, the schedule is very, very important. It's not just a question of one lump importation at the beginning of the year. It has to come in at the proper time. So you're not competing with local farmers. So that's a, that's a very simple first step. Pag, pag ma, maayos na yan, that is one box that I've been, I will say I've been able to tick. Now the... Um, so, but we come back to the problem of production. Uh, so that, again, we still have to put into place. Once I know that the value chain has, been, is, has already been put together, never mind that it is functioning yet, but we already know what needs to be done, what needs to be done in each part of that value chain, and we have the means and we have a plan, then we will have a secretary who will then take my place and will implement that plan. Basta talam natin yung nakakaintindi sa ating ginagawa. So those are the essential elements that I'm talking about. Uh, there's some reorganization that needs to be done in the Department of Agriculture uh, for the simple reason that we are doing different things from what they were doing, what we were doing before. And so you have to restructure the bureaucracy in, 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 uh, in like fashion. I wanted to ask, uh, you said you have a, a bucket list that needs to be ticked off. Would you share some? I mean, well, that's, it. That's, that's it. That's basically it. I yeah. mean, you know, within those, within those, uh, within that subject matter, mm -hmm. hindi, hindi lang yan. I mean, there's, there's, they, if you go into detail, mm -hmm. there are very, still very many things that we can, do, we need to do. Uh, in terms of production, we have to help the farmers. We have to end that we are, we are trying to adopt new techniques uh, for, for the, uh, for farming that, so that will actually that we will be able to use new technology, new mm -hmm. varieties, start with the R&D. Uh, all, all of that, of 
you, you know, and especially in, in this area of agriculture, the overarching uh, issue is climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we have a real, we're having a very tough time mm -hmm. uh, doing, the, scheduling these things because the, the weather keeps changing. Uh, and that one of the re reasons I've, I've uh, also made contact with several other countries and my, my, my uh, counterparts in several countries is that we are trying to develop what we refer to as non-traditional supply, supply uh, suppliers. Uh, and because of the price of fertilizer, uh, the lack of uh, 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 export of wheat, uh, rice, of course, is a, another thing that we import corn, we were going to have to import. But with the shocks that have hit the global economy and with the supply chain problems that we see everywhere, then that is, the, that is, the, uh, that is something that we have to work around. And the way to do it is to have many sources of supply so that whatever happens, uh, we have somewhere to go. Hopefully down the road, uh, in a few years, we no longer have to worry about non-traditional supply uh, because we will be able to produce enough for ourselves.